Thank you, Justin, for joining me. Anytime. So today there yeah. was a meeting, yeah. okay, about Hurricane Barrel okay. and where its direction could right. possibly go. Right. And a lot of Houstonians are looking like, hey, it this this looks like it could get close to Houston. Right. Then I heard overheard in the meeting that it's possibly a setup like Hurricane Harvey. Yeah. It, it, so okay. So let me just let's start with the most obvious thing: is it, it will not be Harvey. Okay. Just okay. like end of story, finito, put period, whatever we need to. Right? All right. It won't. Um, the reason I said that today in the meeting is because the new American model that came in came in with a slightly more aggressive solution and was calling for a landfall. Mm -hmm. So it basically says, you know what? I'm going to try to do a landfall in Corpus Christi okay. Okay? or right around South Padre Island, which, again, far enough away from us, but closer that people will go, eh, what are you doing? Right. right. The problem is, is that this model, when it came in, and this is the overnight model, by the way, this is the one that comes out. That's called the, the 06 model. So it comes out late at night. Right. So there's no new data that's been ingested in it for about six, seven hours. So what happens is sometimes it tries to rerun things that it's already run and that can cause few errors. But it also can sometimes get us to a point where we say, oh, that's interesting. Okay. What are we looking at? Right. Is this a precursor to what the model when it does get new data ingested in is going to show us in the morning? Or what I like to call that model sometimes, we call it we call it drunk hour. And it just gets a little tipsy at night and it shows some things that probably won't happen. The reason I made that assumption or I said that was is because it has it hitting the south coast and then basically crawling up the coast for about the next 24 hours. Okay. That's a similarity to what Harvey did. Right. Now, if it does that, but it does it at what the intensity level that we're looking at in terms of this modeling is be there as a strong tropical storm or a low-end category one hurricane. That's different than Harvey. Harvey was almost a cat five when it made landfall in Rockport. Right? I so remember. we're talking about something existentially bigger and more destructive and more intense and more powerful okay. than what we'll be seeing here. So that's why I say it's not a Harvey. But the scenario that if it does try to crawl up the coastline here, then it'll pull the rain bands in towards Houston and Galveston and Brazoria County and whatnot. And it'll try to do that for a couple of days straight. That's the similarities. Ooh, to Harvey, okay. Right? No. So we may not be talking, you know, and again, the, just disclaimer. Right here, that this is not uh, a final idea of what's happening. The reason we brought this out, and I want to make sure everybody kind of understands what we're looking at, is because it can't look at a model and go, oh, well, that's absolutely not going to happen. Because right. we just don't know, right? We have to get it out into the Gulf, and then that will give us a better understanding about that. So if that's a scenario where it's just going to crawl up the coast, then we could be talking about multiple inches of rain across most of the Houston area, maybe off to the east. When I say multiple, I'm talking like four to six to six to eight to ten. That's a lot, right? That and that's is. enough to do some flooding issues, right? Yeah. And if that's the case, then that's a different scenario than if, let's say, it hits into northern Mexico or as a weaker storm and we get some rain bands, maybe one to three inches, which okay. is what the consensus is right now from what's called the Weather Prediction Center. And that's the people that put the forecast together. Okay. So they're not biting on this just yet. Okay. Personally, my weather gut, weather gut <laughs> is not biting on it yet. Okay. But it's there. And I want you guys, I want you guys to know what we're seeing and what we know and what we don't know, right? Okay. So here's the bottom line. Bottom line is that we will get new data coming in with that American model in the next couple of hours today. Okay. We will continue to see it update tonight. It will go through its drunken hour, and then it will go back to sobriety in the morning. Now, the question is, will that sobriety show similar to what we were seeing? Mm. If that's the case, okay, well, then now we have more confidence that maybe that is going to be a more dangerous scenario for Houston. But if it's not, and it's a blip, then we'll go back to what we were thinking where most of the effects will be down to this. So South what Coast. is the percentage of the drunken hours aligning up with like the more sober hours? <laughs> you know what? This is the first time I've seen it do that. Oh. So that would put me more of maybe it had one too many cocktails. Oh, okay. It just needs to sober up in the morning and it'll get back to going, yeah, I'm going to move it into Brownsville, Northern Mexico. Like the rest of my colleagues are showing, like all the other modeling is going right into the Northern Mexico. Right? Okay. So it's not out of the question that that they could be slowly moving north up the South Texas coast. Sure, that's a possibility that could happen. Some of the factors that we don't know about that yet is it has to get into the Yucatan Peninsula. And what does it do from there? Okay. Does it just clip the very tip of it like that, like Cozumel, okay. and then back out in the Gulf where it can blow up again? Ooh. Or does it go wham right into the Yucatan where it's going to get chewed up a little bit going through Right. Kind of like if you're mowing and you right. hit that heavy patch of grass and you like you put a little more effort to like yeah. get through it. The Gulf is hot right now. Like Gulf it's really, hot. really hot in the right. Gulf. So right. it's 
I guess like once it gets in that area, it has a chance of moving a little bit up because of how hot it is. Like it's sort of. Well, like basically what can happen at that point is, is that if the if if all of the hot water that's in the Gulf can cause it to rapidly intensify Ooh, again, right? Okay. So the stronger the storm, the tighter the spin. Oh, so okay. if you're looking at a map like this, if it's a weaker spin, it'll go more straight, right? Okay. Just because it's kind of like a bus with no steering wheel. It just kind of goes until something moves it. Okay. But if it's a stronger spin, it'll have more of a tendency to turn just because of the spin itself. Ooh, turn right? where? <laughs> well, turn north up head towards our coast. Oh, so that's okay. what really a big determinant to is to what's the strength of this once it gets into the Gulf. My, again, weather guy probably says we're going to be looking at at least a Category 1 hurricane in okay. the Gulf. So the question is, does it have enough time to make that violent of a turn to get up towards, let's say, like Matagorda Bay, which would have more of a direct effect on us, versus if it takes its time to intensify, then that'll probably steer it closer to northern Mexico. Is it just doesn't have enough. It's like... Think about like turning a compact car versus turning that old boat that your grandma used to have. That okay. old, like deuce and a quarter, you know, the Buick Electra 225. And you had, to, you had to take your time turning the thing around because it was so big. Okay. So I remember Harvey. Okay. I was here during that time. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people. Well, first I want to say I remember Harvey was strong and then it got into the Gulf and it just. Blew up. Blew up. Yeah. So we could make that prediction. That's just something that's just out of our hands, right? That's out we of our hands, get yeah. As close as we can right. with the um, predictions. Yeah. And so I know a lot of people felt very, um, some people felt very unprepared, although sure. we were warning them and a lot of oh, people yeah. get yeah. mad at us for warning and right. saying that we're just fear mongering. But sure. really, they don't really understand the news is that we have to tell you the prediction so you can be ready as possible. Because sure. a lot of people don't get paid, you know, like right. you, they're, they're depending on a biweekly check. So it's just right. like, hey, let's prepare. You see, there's storms. It's hurricane season. Right. Like, let, we're just telling you, yep. hey, this this looks like it's getting kind of close. Right. Be prepared. We're right. not just trying to scare you. So, I guess like to ease some of that anxiety of why we're talking about this storm, and a lot of people are like, why are you guys trying to scare us? Like, mm -hmm. can you just tell us from like a weather pers perspective? Yeah. Well, it's just one of those where I I want to make sure everybody's prepared, especially because it's a holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. You're going to be thinking, you know, what's on the smoker? Where are the ribs? Yeah. Where's the hot dogs and hamburgers? Yep. Right. Where, where, the drink. Right. right. Where, are the, <laughs> where are the adult beverages? Yes. Where's the pool? Right. I get it. And I want everybody to have a great time tomorrow on the 4th and your weekend. But also make sure when you have some quiet time, especially by Saturday, check the Storm Tracker 2 live weather app and yes. just see where the storm is and what's happened. Just right. follow. Just, just follow. follow. That's yeah. all I want it's you to do. Not a fear mongering. Right. It's more so let's prepare you for right. the worst. And I would rather prepare you for the worst and nothing happens right. than feeling unprepared right. like Hurricane Harvey. A lot of people felt unprepared of how detrimental it was going to well, be. Well, because Harvey turned in from a tropical storm to a Cat 4 hurricane in like 36 exactly. hours. Exactly. Right? And it was so, wild. So mm -hmm. I don't think we'll necessarily see that with this one. But I, as I said, I would not be shocked if we're talking about Hurricane Barrel, barrel still mm. by Sunday and it's getting dangerously close to our coastline, right? And okay. so if that's the case, we're going to start feeling the effects before you go back to work um, on Monday. Like, we'll feel the effects of the coast by okay. Sunday at that point, right? Okay. So um, so that's why it's good to be prepared, right? And obviously, this will change. We can have this conversation tomorrow. We can do it on Friday, and I'll yes. probably have different details to tell you. But I just want to make sure everybody knows what we know, what we don't know. Mm. And you know what? We'll go from there, right? Okay. So the bottom line is be prepared, check back in, right? You got no excuses. We all got phones in our hands and our pockets. Yes. So make sure you're following the Storm Tracker 2 weather team, um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I post on all of those as well. I'll make sure I'm very active through the weekend because I want to make sure everybody knows what's happening. Good, good. Um, and we'll go from there. You know, we'll just kind of see. Hopefully, uh, all of the rest of the more sober models are correct and, and it'll go into <laughs> northern Mexico. And you know what? The valley in central Texas will get a lot of good needed rain that they need because yeah. they've got drought conditions and it will keep the flooding to a minimum. We'll get some coastal effects, but other than that, we won't get a whole lot. Right. But okay. do expect next week. I think regardless of whatever scenario happens, it's probably going to be a shift to a much stormier week overall. So okay. just kind of prep so just for that. Expect rain. Yeah, if you got outdoor plans. Later in the week, Thursday, Friday is probably a better chance to try to get those done. First couple of days are probably going to be pretty messy, regardless of whatever form this takes um, at that point. So just just kind of prep for we will we will see. At least it'll be cooler, right? Okay. There we go. Like yeah. 
We, glass we half full there. It's going to be, we, it'll be 100 degrees. <laughs> we complain about, about heat and then we get the rain and complain right. about and the we'll rain and then we get the heat. <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. Yeah, but we'll, we'll be updating. The whole weather team's going to be here through the weekend um, into next week as well. So we're, we're prepared. We want to make sure everybody is. Thank you so much. And I'm going to get those graphics for you and make sure that we post those so people yeah. can kind of just. Follow along with Follow the along. drunken and sober That's right. That's right. It's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Another thing to uh, click the Houston.com slash weather. We've got a daily weather page or a daily weather article, I should say, on the page that's updated throughout the day. So when new graph, I literally just updated it now. So when new graphics come in, okay, they go right in there yeah. so that you've got the latest information of, of what we're, uh, what we're working on. Here. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that people like hear from you on a personal level. Sure. And of course they can follow you on social media yep. and um, follow our articles. So keeping up to date every day with everything, yep. but just kind of like hearing your voice and kind of, I know nothing about weather. I work in news. I don't have any clue. I just see the graphics and even I'm like, what's going on? Sure. What's happening? Yeah, so let's just sit that's down and talk about it. Yeah. yeah. That's why we're here. Thank you so much. Justine. Anytime.